we're going to jump into another one that you've kind of handled. I know we've got uh, about 15 minutes, but uh, barbarians. Yes, Bar much less complicated than this one. Much less complicated. And we've got a much older, uh, in terms of the length and, and, and the breadth of uh, D&D 5th edition, we've got the, uh, what are we looking at today? We are looking at the Path of the Battle Rager. Path of the Battle Rager. So, from Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. This is another one we did a Class 101 on recently, so you can check that out too. Yeah, and that we will have that link in the YouTube video as well. So tell me about the Path of the Battle Rager. What makes this this barbarian unique. This is the first one to really pop up after the player's handbook had come out. Mm -hmm. um, this one's very specific to dwarves, but not necessarily. Yeah, so this is a, a Forgotten Realms particular subclass. Uh, it, it's something that came out of the Forgotten Realms lore. And you can you can take it for your own campaign if you want. But uh, the dwarves of Mithril Hall and other dwarves around the Sword Coast um, follow a very unique and particular uh, tradition of battle and that would be the, the path of the battle rager followers of gods of war and so forth they wear spiked armor so that every part of their body can be a weapon um, and since this is a, a based on forgotten realms lore uh only dwarves can follow the path of the battle rager by like hardcore rules if you're playing in uh forgotten realms mm -hmm. uh but there are absolutely ways to get around this. If you're playing in a non-Forgotten Realm setting, then well, all bets are off already. I think it would be very cool if a Dragonborn culture had uh, the specific sort of spiked armor thing. Yeah. Thinking about like the spines that full-blooded dragons have, they just want to be, every bit of them is dangerous. And then they open their mouths and fire comes out. It's like, you can't even get near these guys. Or a turtle with spikes on shell. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, it's yes. way too perfect. And what I like, especially we're having this great conversation about um, uh, having uh, battle wheel chairs in D&D. &D, mm. And I feel like the path of the battle rager is kind of perfect in a lot of ways oh. because of some of the abilities you get with it. Very interesting. Um, but let's, let's, let's break it down really quick and then we'll examine it. So um, yeah. what, what's very unique about, about the battle rager is you have very specific armor, which is mm -hmm. an unusual thing for barbarians. Mm -hmm. um, while you're wearing spiked armor and you are raging, you can use your bonus action uh, to make one melee attack uh, with your armor spikes against a target within five feet of you. If the attack hits, the spike de deals 1d4 piercing damage and you use your strength modifier. This is really evocative. You kind of like, maybe you elbow someone with a spike in your elbow uh, or you have, you literally like hug them and you have spikes on your chest um, or you've got like a spiked gauntlet. There's all kinds of like, if you're covered in spikes, you're doing damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's really funny. Uh, uh, and it also says, additionally, when you attack um, as an action, you can grapple a creature. And if you do, that target takes three piercing damage. Yep. Grapple them. So this is a class that really likes to, uh, they get bonuses for grappling, which yeah. uh, is awesome. It's always cool to see something that really focuses in on a, a somewhat uh, underused part of the game. Um, yeah. And because there's already some bonuses to grappling, you can even, you can go even harder into this corner there's a grappler feat from the player's handbook yep. that uh, pairs well with this guy and just like think about what being a dedicated grappler does it singles out opponents it keeps them from moving closer to your party it makes it harder for them to make attacks effectively if you've got a guy on the ground you're covered in spikes digging into him he can't move he can only attack you that's awesome. That's exactly what you want out of a barbarian. You want people attacking you yeah. because you're taking half damage from rage. You've got a gigantic amount of hit points to begin with. Uh, you want that person looking at you, not your friends. Yeah, you've locked down that character. Like that, that one, like that could be the main villain. It could be any, so anyone who's the threat to everyone else. Mm -hmm. You've locked them down. And because they're prone, you've got advantage on your attack rolls against them. Yeah, and Amazing. you are the you are the control. Like you're no longer mm -hmm. just a tank. You mm -hmm. <laughs> you are like controlling the situation completely. Mm -hmm. um, this is great for a barbarian. And mm -hmm. then like at, at sixth level, you get this reckless abandon. Um, when you reckless attack while raging, you also gain uh, temporary hit points equal to your Constitution modifier. They vanish if any of them are left when this rage ends. But this is again like you you you're super tanky. They're stuck with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you're doing damage. 
And you kind of want to be using Reckless Attack every turn anyway. You want to get those attack rolls uh, with advantage. And to yeah. be perfectly honest, you want attack rolls against you to be made with advantage too, because it means that people are focusing on you and not other people. That's true. A a every attack that goes towards you is an attack that isn't going towards the wizard in the party. And that sounds fantastic. To it me makes you a more alert, an alluring target. But mm -hmm. and what this does account for is, yeah, because you're stuck grappling this person, you're not going to see every attack coming for you, but you've got those temporary hit points to mitigate that vul vulnerability exactly exactly uh, and then at 10th level battle rager charge you get you can do the dash action as a bonus action i love this and again i love this with the, the concept of a battle wheelchair because you're just mm. rushing into battle and just mm. wrecking yeah, yeah. Uh, i think it would be cool if you got a little bit something extra on top of it because you already kind of want to be using your bonus action to be making a spiked armor attack that's a good point um, yeah. If you could dash and then immediately make an attack as part of that dash, I think that would be super cool. And yeah. I think if, if, if I can, if I can be honest here, I think the subclass is a little bit on the weak side as far as barbarian subclasses go, if we compare yeah. to stuff in Xanathars and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so I think if you wanted to uh, house roll a little bit of extra juice for this guy, uh, giving them the ability to dash and then make a bonus action attack, perfectly reasonable totally yeah and these okay. are these are early days of fifth and, and fifth that's the thing yeah this design. subclass came out in 2015 like this subclass yeah. came out like five years ago exactly uh, if, if you wanted to give it a little extra juice that's no problem at all yeah i i, I would totally do the same I, I have all kinds of weird house rules um like potions mm -hmm. i famously i am a proponent of bonus actions for drinking <laughs> potions yes, especially yes. if you're playing the alchemist you should be able to do that um it makes you far more effective uh, and then at 14th level, we have Spiked Retribution. We, uh, uh, when a creature within five feet of you hits with a melee attack, the attacker takes three piercing damage from you if you're raging. Um, this makes it so even if they're attacking you, they're, they're getting hurt as well. I, I, I adore that feature. Um, it's kind of the opposite of the feat, the armor, where you, you can actually take away three points of damage. This isn't horribly overpowered at 14th level at all. Um, it's a little specific because this would be more effective if you had like tons of enemies trying to hit you. Like mm -hmm. you could just mow through goblins. If they are trying to kill you, they're getting probably, they might be getting more hurt by their actions of trying to kill you. Yeah. But are you attacking goblins at 14th level? Probably not. You're unless you're a horribly mean person. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I think it would be nice if this added uh, some extra damage to all of your attacks too. I, I love uh, I love sort of backsplash retrib retributive damage. Mm -hmm. I think it's very cool. But I think just sort of a, a broader damage buff across the board uh, would be appreciated. Seeing as, you know, you're a big pincushion already. You might as well be throwing yourself into battle at every opportunity. Yeah. I, it's There's some interesting multi-classing possibilities here, I think. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what if you, if you multi-classed into, say, the Unearthed Arcana rune knight you know you have advantage on strength checks now you get that extra uh, 1d6 or 1d8 strength damage you know because when you go big so now you're a giant who's spiky who's really good at wrestling <laughs> <laughs> would it be cool to class into monk as this the image it, is cool yeah. but do the mechanics work oh boy i'd love being monk. just like a spiky spiky monkey hopping around crashing yeah. into people that, that it's interesting i i have not ever made a barbarian monk um I, do, I don't make a lot of monks i don't make a lot of barbarians but yeah that, that would be very interesting i i i, I would have to take a deep dive into seeing like how effective it, it, that would be it kind of goes with the your entire body is a weapon thing that the monks have going on i think it would be very cool for a monk to have like spiked gauntlets that would deal a little bit of extra damage whenever they punched we're definitely getting into homebrew territory here. This is stuff where you need to talk with your DM about house rules hard, but uh, the concept is just so cool. I like the idea of a tiny, a tiny little creature that makes your life uh, complete hell. So like, like, a like, a, like a little halfling, <laughs> like a little or a hell a goblin, a little goblin because you got the fury of the small. Uh, yes, and you just you're just covered in spikes, and you are like just the spiked ball, and you just like run. And maybe you've got like, maybe you took a mage initiate dip or something where you can cast, well, you want to be raging. Yeah. I would take so, something like mobile, mobile. And mm -hmm. so you just like leap and attach yourself to a much bigger enemy. There is, um, there is my, my brother in my current campaign is playing a, uh, a goblin 
barbarian swashbuckler multi-class. And uh, he, he did it to me, this weird kind of tank build where he's taking quarter damage from big attacks because he'll take half from Rage uh, and then he'll have it again with Uncanny Dodge. So I, I, I will hit him with 30 damage. He's like, actually, I'm taking seven, thanks. And we're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I can see uh, that sort of uh, rogue slash barbarian build with, uh, with the goblin working pretty, in a pretty fun way with this class. You know, I am very, very curious. So we, we looked at all that piercing damage. Mm -hmm. um, there are new unearthed arcana feats. Oh, yes. And I, I, I'm curious because obviously there was the piercer. Yeah, what does I that feat do again? Yeah, let me, let, me, let me find that real quick because... I, I think it's under game rules and game feats. Rules. I can't see because I got my camera in front of... There we go and all right so this should list even you a and we want the piercer because mm -hmm. this could get real interesting like you could just lock oh, someone down is. so this is really great because it increases your strength mm -hmm. once per turn when you hit a creature with an attack that deals piercing damage you can re-roll one of the attacks damage die ah and it, it's you gotta okay. use the new roll it's it, it's okay it's okay. That's what you want with a very like with like a spear, something that does we a bigger die, right? Like mm -hmm. re-rolling a one d four is like. It it would be cool if your DM allowed you to have a a great spear, kind of like a great axe, a big d twelve damage die, yeah. heavy weapon, long, uh, just kind of a reflavored great axe that would go well with this with this one. Yeah, and then when when you score a critical hit that deals piercing damage, um. To a creature, you can roll one additional damage die when determining the extra piercing damage the target takes. You plug that in with the Barbarian Savage Attacker feature, you've just tripled, uh, well, you've just gotten two extra damage dice on top of that. That yeah, does feel I, good. I, I can see, like, okay, maybe I'd take this. Yeah, you're, you're a Barbarian with, like, a very large pole arm or something like that, mm -hmm. or a spear. Like, are you allowed to use two-handed weapons? As Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. Um... And then you're getting a little bit extra damage. It's nothing like that's locking people down because I think the slasher feet actually, like if you do damage, they may actually have their their movement speed reduced to zero, mm. um, or, or or by ten, and that that would have been great synergy for the battle rager. Mm. Uh, but we're not just we're not seeing that here. Yeah. Um, eh, we like talking about how thrills and homebrew a little bit, but we don't want to go totally wild with it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a fun. I think I think it's a fun. Uh, I do like the, the, the idea of my tiny little goblin just covered in spikes and you're just like, please <laughs> yeah. don't jump on me. <laughs> it will never get you off. I, I, I think the extremes of size are very fun to play with here. A tiny little goblin or a gigantic Goliath who's got like right. magic items that helps him grow to enormous size. Then you've got like, oh my God, either this tiny ball of death is coming my way like a spiked baseball yeah. or there is, there is a man covered in eight carpets worth of spikes just trying to lay down on me oh my god yeah i love because i love like the, the yeah the one idea is like that you just grab someone and you've, you're holding them up and they can't quite fight and the other uh -huh. version is like you, this goblin is like literally like it's crawling on your back it's crawling on your legs it's like crawling on your arm and you're just like please make this stop so, it's yeah, like it's like when you've got a spider that just kind of yeah rolls down on your so terrifying. shoulder like, oh. Oh yeah! If you want to make it really terrifying, then you you go uh well yeah. Uh, you can you poison your armor spikes? That's what I'm curious oh. about. Like with the with the poisoner, I, I think yes, on some degree. So I would is, allow it. I mean, it, they're they're weapons. They are weapons. You, you can, can coat, coat a weapon in poison. You can coat a weapon in poison as bonus action instead of an attack. I would basically say you're coating your armor. You uh -huh. gain proficiency with a poison kit with one hour of work. You can make this poison. Um, when a weapon you, you've coated with the poison damage do, is dealt to the creature, that creature must make a DC 14 constitution saving throw or take an additional 2d8 poison damage and become poisoned. And with that poison condition, is not nothing to joke at. Disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks is pretty great. Which means you're not getting out of grapple now. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Wow. Ooh. I like this synergy because these are opposed roles, right? Like, so mm -hmm. you're doing an opposed strength check. So they're making their strength checks at disadvantage. You're making your grapple checks at advantage. 
what is that triple disadvantage where would you call it quadruple disadvantage oh man in a, in a sense right because you're doing better they're doing way worse um and they're getting poisoned this is a goblin i don't want to mess with <laughs> i don't want to mess with this goblin <laughs> even funnier the, the poison's coming from your tongue for some reason and you like lick your uh, spikes before you get into battle uh, <laughs> and you just jump in there that's ooh, when i like play a, a toad uh uh a, a, a grung a grung, a grung. <laughs> Oh my god! Sorry, I'm way too excited for this. Oh my uh, god, that's very funny. Don't grung in, innately have poison on them? I think so. And you know, we need to remember. Technically, this is a dwarven-only subclass, but if your DM is letting you be a wild <laughs> goblin covered in spikes, it's the rule of poison cool. spikes. What what are you doing? I love because I'm talking about that leaper, a spiked frog, a spiked mm -hmm. toad, which is very on brand, really. Mm -hmm. um, I like the turtle is amusing because you know, Super Mario Brothers, I guess. Yeah, I, um, I like the idea of a of a warforged in the situation where like the spikes are just part of them. Yeah, the spiked armor is a part of their body. Um, uh, so grungs, you know, they're tiny. You know, like, even if you're even if you're playing forgotten realms think of what could be a fun story for how a grung learned a secret dwarven art of battle rage like did this grung like spy on dwarves in chult for this a year figuring so out their amazing. secrets this is so okay standing leap your long jump is 25 feet your high jump is 15 feet you're like um, a cannonball a spiked you cannonball, cannonball. Any creature that grapples you or otherwise comes in direct contact with your skin <laughs> must make a DC 12 constitution saving throw or be poisoned. A poison creature no longer uh, in direct contact with you can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, no longer in contact with you. Uh, you can also apply this poison to any piercing weapon as part of an attack with that weapon, though in wow so this you know i mean i'd still get poisoner because of the 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 you know getting over resistance mm -hmm. but so uh though when you hit the poison that reacts differently the target must make a dc 12 constitution saving throw not as great as the other one uh and take 2d4 points poison damage i, I mean, think once once you've nightmare. got them grappled you've got both types of poison going on you've got them grappled so they're 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 poisoned and weak and then you just like lick your armor spikes before jabbing your forearm into them <laughs> it's yeah like extra I mean, damage what you're really looking oh. at is as the poisoner you're okay you're a, you're a tiny little toad covered in spikes you jump <laughs> grappled you spike them with your spike you got the poisoner feet so you, you they have to make that constitution 14 saving throw or they take 2d8 and the 1d4. Then you're just touching them. <laughs> so that's I, a problem. I desperately want to play this character. <laughs> so now, oh my god, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So now they have to make a DC 12 constitution saving throw and take another 2d4 poison, <laughs> poison damage. And you have not even made like a physical attack roll. Yeah, and, and it says any any attack with this weapon there's no action that limits how many times you can poison your your spikes so if you just want to make every attack on your turn with your spikes and at level five that's three attacks attack action gets you two bonus action gets you another that's a lot of poison damage coming up i adore i adore this <laughs> wow. i adore this i'm making this character oh, i don't know why wow. i'm pulling him my little spiky boy uh <laughs> I love finding random things like this. This is so much fun. This now makes that class super powerful and a nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, now we we gotta be we gotta be careful though. There are a lot of creatures that are just completely immune to poison. It's true. So this guy could run into a bit of, of a brick wall, but totally, it's so much fun. <laughs> this concept it's is so, so wild. <laughs> it's, it's I, so I would funny. accept. I would accept having my build nerfed to nothing. Uh, whenever I go up against zombies or or yeah. or something, yeah. like that, I'll just be like, you know what? Sometimes it's just the way it's got to be. This if I want to be a spike and you, toad, <laughs> and you got that frog just being all nimbly bimbly <laughs> running around you. <laughs> all right, everyone, thank you so much for watching Talk Talks. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, putting up with me and James Hake, my lead writer. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Be sure to check in the actual description for this video, and you will find uh, James's wonderful series called Class 101. It will also include a guide to building a berserker. I'm mm -hmm. very tempted now to write a berserker build specifically for a grung. Yeah. Um, and making that character and Battle just making Rager, that available. Same diff. Battle Rager, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See ya.